Oh, and do you ever run those cartoons about that ridiculous little nearsighted old man? What is Mr. Magoo Syndrome? Is Mr. Magoo offensive to people with blindness or visual impairments? And why was Mr. Magoo cancelled? Welcome to Do You Remember, I am Nostalgic Nick. Mr. Magoo, the elderly curmudgeon who wouldn't let an extreme case of myopia prevent him from doing the things he loved. You know, like cooking, driving, and rooting for Rutgers. Charlie, his live-in servant, never left his side and seemed to be a big part of the reason why he lived to such an advanced age. But the cartoon was also full of ethnic stereotypes. And the National Federation for the Blind even passed an official resolution condemning and deploring the 1997 film. You know, the one that starred comedy legend Leslie Nielsen. Buckle up, you're not going to want to miss this outrageous story. But before we dive in, please hit that thumbs up button to help the video circulate. And subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a new video. Is Mr. Magoo based on a real person? Come on, Waldo! Huh? Follow me! Oh, yeah, 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 okay, oh, you're a scatterbrain yeah. boy. Mr. Magoo first appeared in the theatrical short, The Ragtime Bear, in which he mistakes a bear for his nephew, Waldo. Animation director John Hubley reportedly based the character on legendary misanthrope W.C. Fields, as well as his uncle Harry, who never changed his mind after he made a snap judgment. Human cartoon characters weren't really a thing in the late 1950s, and Columbia only released the short because it assumed the bear was the star. But of course, the cartoon was a smash hit, and the studio quickly greenlit more shorts. Creating a curmudgeon The great Jim Backus based Mr. Magoo's voice on a character he created for his nightclub act. A loudmouth traveling salesman who shows pictures of his family to everybody in the club car belongs to all the clubs and tells dirty jokes. In a 1978 interview, he said, quote, Magoo has been very good to me, but I certainly don't think of him as myself. Bacchus was perhaps best known for playing eccentric millionaire Thurston Howell III. I mean, who didn't watch Gilligan's Island? But he also made a bunch of guest appearances on popular TV shows, The Love Boat and Fantasy Island. But Bacchus also called Mr. Magoo a pain in the posterior and said, quote, I'd like to bury the old creep and get some good dramatic roles in movies. Not too fast now, baby boy. Bacchus' wife, Henny, voiced Mother Magoo in the show. Henny also said that while her husband was shooting the 1952 film, Don't Bother to Knock, his co-star Marilyn Monroe asked him to meet her in her dressing room. And when he arrived, Monroe playfully asked him to do Mr. Magoo, which he obligingly did. On the banks of the old Raritan, Mr. Magoo's creators wanted him to be a college alumnus who was still fired up with the old school spirit. And according to United Productions of America president Hank Saperstein, he was definitely East Coast and he was Ivy League. But I knew Harvard and Yale weren't quite right. Then it came to me in a flash. Rutgers. Did you say Rutgers? According to Saperstein, quote, Rutgers was the embodiment of the old school tie in America. Quincy Magoo was a member of the class of 1928. And Jim Backus said, quote, We made up a complete biography for the little jerk. He graduated from Rutgers. He's a card-carrying Republican and was on the committee to re-elect William McKinley. In Magoo's Homecoming, our hero winds up at the zoo instead of his alma mater and gives his secret fraternity handshake to an elephant. In Trouble Indemnity, a fly-by-night salesman poses as a fellow alum to try to sell Mr. Magoo a policy and gets more than he bargained for as he watches his accident-prone client wander onto a construction site. Mr. Magoo TV Star the Ragtime Bear was a one-off collaboration between John Hubley and creative director Pete Burness. Burness took over the series after Hubley left, but the producers decided that Mr. Magoo was too mean-spirited. They wanted his character to be softened up. And it worked. Four Mr. Magoo shorts received Academy Award nominations. And the shorts When Magoo Flew and Magoo's Puddle Jumper won Oscars. Mr. Magoo also starred in 1001 Arabian Nights, UPA's first feature-length production. 
UPA shut down its animation studio in 1959, and subsequent Mr. Magoo shorts were produced by Jack Kinney Productions and Larry Harmon Pictures. Watch those sudden stops, boy! Somebody could get hurt! It was during this time that the animation started to suffer. According to legendary animator and Wild E. Coyote creator Chuck Jones, quote, in animation, it became unfashionable and a little shameful to animate in the great tradition, and animators found little pride in their craft. And no innovations of animation worthy of note are to be found in the so-called UPA school. Is Mr. Magoo racist? Like many other cartoons produced in the 1960s, Mr. Magoo shorts featured numerous ethnically stereotyped characters. I think most notably his houseboy Charlie, Podcaster Larry Grogan acknowledges that cartoons from the period were often filled with broad racial stereotypes, and said, quote, Charlie was pretty much there to get clobbered while Mr. Magoo sailed along blissfully unaware that he had been in danger. Well, if you say so, Bloss. <coughs> oh, it little good. But the problem was how the character taking all the abuse was portrayed. Despite his appearance, Charlie served as the series' most dependable straight man and one of its few sane characters. But episodes featuring Charlie were pulled from syndication in the late 1960s, and his character was never again seen or mentioned. Charlie's episodes returned on the Mr. Magoo show reruns in the 1980s, but this time with a redubbed voice, but his appearance did remain unaltered. Is Mr. Magoo offensive to the visually impaired? In 1993, Steven Spielberg took out an option to make a live-action Mr. Magoo film, but was too busy figuring out how to spend all that Jurassic Park cash to begin production. But fear not, Steve landed on his feet. Spielberg instead decided to focus on Schindler's List, which actually did okay. When Disney announced the upcoming film in 1997, members of the blind and visually impaired community immediately protested. In the Washington Post, guest writer Kathy Wolf said, quote, To me and many other blind people, dusting off Magoo is as demeaning as bringing back Amos and Andy would be for many African Americans. Henry Saperstein replied that Wolf, quote, completely misses the point that in more than 200 films, Mr. Magoo, despite his nearsightedness, is courageous, heroic, and dignified, and always shows that you can win even if you have a handicap. At the 1997 National Federation for the Blind Convention, numerous individuals came forward to share personal stories about being persecuted because of their disabilities. And NFB President Mark Maurer said, quote, the Disney people have dragged Mr. Magoo back from richly deserved obscurity in the hope that Americans will think it's funny to watch an ill-tempered and incompetent blind man stumble into things and misunderstand his surroundings. The organization unanimously passed Resolution 9703, which called upon Disney to quote, abandon production of this offensive project and to let Quincy Magoo die a natural death. The film was a box office bomb, soon to home video in less than three weeks. Disney did include a disclaimer at the end of the film, claiming that it was not intended as an accurate portrayal of the visually impaired. Film critic Roger Ebert said the disclaimer was the only funny moment in the whole movie. Ebert also said, quote, Mr. Magoo is transcendently bad. It soars above ordinary badness as the eagle outreaches the fly and also called the film a one-joke movie without the joke. Should Mr. Magoo be cancelled? Mr. Magoo's name is often used as an insult. You know, toward referees who missed too many calls and umpires who couldn't find the strike zone with a map and a compass. Just in 2018, then-President Trump denied calling Attorney General Jeff Sessions Mr. Magoo and later claimed he wasn't familiar with the character. Julie Hunter from the Colorado Parents of Blind Children said, quote, Laughing at ourselves is healthy, but creating jokes from a stereotype can be hurtful. According to Hunter, quote, Some say that sensitivities are running too high and that we all need to be able to laugh at ourselves, but we maintain our dignity and self-respect by choosing when, where, and to whom we reveal our foibles. Hunter concludes her open letter by saying, Although on one level the audience understands that he is a character, on a deeper level, Mr. Magoo's antics may foster doubts about a blind person's ability to function independently, and that is no laughing matter. 
Dan Rodericks from the Baltimore Sun said, quote, Fun comes with new rules, one of which says you don't make humor out of things people cannot control, but that, quote, all filmmakers, from the obnoxious megacorporation to the grunge independent, should be allowed to produce any movie they choose. We don't like it, we don't buy it. Roderick added, Disney gets the flack it deserves and criticism is the price it pays for a lack of originality, for betraying the joy of imagination, for reaching back 30 years to recycle a character who should have been allowed to rest in his one-dimensional cartoon world. Oh God, <laughs> I have nothing left. <laughs> Rebecca Nappy from the Spokane Spokesman Review called the controversy, quote, political correctness gone awry. Nappy believes that Disney saves millions of dollars in advertising because its films generate news, which is, of course, free. She referred to the similar backlash when Native Americans protested the 1995 release of Pocahontas. Nappy warns her readers, quote, Don't let yourself be manipulated no matter how well you think you see. Oh, granted, Bowser. <laughs> We've got bulb snatchers. At various times, Mr. Magoo has also appeared in advertisements for numerous products and organizations. Some big ones too. GE, RCA, the US Navy, the National Safety Council, and the American Heart Association. Most recently, he appeared in MetLife's Everyone commercial during Super Bowl 46 back in 2012. A new version of Mr. Magoo, produced by a French animation studio, actually began airing in 2018, featuring a younger-looking Magoo, and you can watch reruns of the classic ones on both Disney Plus and HBO Max. Alright, that's been our look at the often controversial and always colorful Quincy Magoo. But now, we really need to hear from you. What was your favorite Mr. Magoo short? Did anyone enjoy the 1997 film, or does it deserve the 9% rating on Rotten Tomatoes? Honestly, do you think the character should just be shelved or canceled? Or are the protesters simply being too nearsighted? Get in the comments and tell us all your thoughts on Mr. Magoo. If you enjoyed our video today, please give it a thumbs up to help it circulate. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our latest release. But most importantly, from all of us here at Do You Remember, we want to thank you very much for watching.